Hey buddy, Crow back again, and I seem to have stumbled into collecting vinyl records. It was something I was kind of always interested in getting into, but I, I always see these video game soundtracks on vinyl, and, I, I, and my, th my thought was, well, I don't have a record player, so why would I get that? Well, um, I, a series of events happened, and I wound up getting a few albums, which led me getting this thing, which I just wanted to get something really cheap and, and simple. And this is just a portable record player, which I haven't plugged in yet, which I'll have to do um, for purposes of this video. I'm obviously not going to be playing any any actual audio in this video because it would just get copyright strike. Copyright struck instantly. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is just kind of how I fell into it. And then a few albums I bought after uh, the initial couple that I had gotten before I got into record player. But yeah, I just got this A-Moon um, travel. I, I like the texture on this one. I just wanted something simple I could pull out, plug in, and listen to an album without having to plug anything in. Now, I could plug this into the stereo system and, 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 and whatnot. I haven't done that yet. This does have Bluetooth capability, but it doesn't work the way I thought it would. I thought I'd be able to just connect to external speakers through via Bluetooth. But no, actually, the Bluetooth is for you could t connect other devices through this and uh, play through the, the speakers in the front here. And it sounds OK. I mean, it's not wonderful, like spectacular or anything, but it does the job. I can actually listen to the albums that I've gotten. But I think eventually one day I will get a, a dedicated turntable I could hook up to my stereo system. And again, that's that's another, you know, this video is kind of a hybrid of sorts. It's kind of a. a you know, hey, this is my vinyl record collection. It's also a pickup video because all this stuff I have gotten recently. And it's also, uh, I want to hear in the comments any suggestions you may have. Like, oh, this this uh, um, turntable is like the best you'll ever get or whatever. But again, I don't want to spend like $500 for one either, at least not at this point in time. So uh, we'll see how serious I get into this. I do have eight albums right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of show them off one at a time and why I got it and where. Actually, I've completely forgot to mention that I did have vinyl way back as a kid. Uh, like we're talking about before I was like 10 years old in the, the mid to late 90s, before CDs came around, before I started collecting cassettes and stuff. I did have a couple of albums. Uh, I still haven't been over to my mom's house to see if she still has them or not. And if I do pick them up, I will put them in, a, in another video, probably next pickup video. Uh, but this is actually the first one I got recently, like about a month or so ago. And this is the, uh, it's not the whole soundtrack, but it is a couple tracks from Sayonara Wild Hearts. This is the, um, the sleeve it came in. It comes with uh, two songs on side A, Begin Again, and on side B, Mine. Now, the reason I got this, I didn't order this or anything, but I did order from I Am 8-Bit a, a physical copy of Cyanar Wild Hearts. But because of COVID, uh, there was a delay in shipping these out. And they said as a reward for, um, you know, having to wait, they actually said there'd be a surprise. So the surprise was uh, uh, the single, I guess, was 45. And... I said, that's great. I don't have any way to play it. So <laughs> so it sat on the shelf. And then it wasn't until I got the second album that I really considered actually getting something to play these on and start collecting vinyl. Actually, completely forgot that uh, this is the sleeve. And there was a sticker on the outside wrapper. And now if I thought properly, I would have just cut the wrapper without unwrapping it completely. But there was a little sticker in there. I don't know if you could see that. But it says Red Bull Limited Edition. I don't know why that was on there. But I... I Forgot to show that off, so I had to make a little cut here. All right, the second album I actually got, actually the first full album I got here, is the Mystery Science Theater 3000, Complete Clowns in the Sky. Now, I already had this on CD. This was actually two different CDs that I had bought. and one, The first uh, one was like the, um, I can't remember now. Um, I think it was the Comedy Central era, and then the second uh, CD was the Sci-Fi era. Yeah, I had to get this because the Mystery Science Theater th uh, 3000 store wound up having a sale, and um, everything in their store was 50% off. Now, I wound up buying like $200 worth of things off the store, and I paid about $100. 
But this was originally like over forty dollars. It was on sale for. Uh, it was over. Is that originally like forty something dollars, and I was on sale for forty dollars. And with the half off, this I paid about twenty dollars for this. And it does have two albums in there. The first one, as you can see, kind of uh, simulates Crow with the black and the gold, if you can consider that to be gold. And then the second album here uh, simulates um, a vinyl record, I guess. I guess this is one album. <laughs> um, Tom Servo with uh, the red and the white. So it's pretty cool. And they're doing the uh, It Stinks gesture uh, from the movie uh, Pod People, where he's like, It stinks. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I just was like, I got to have the vinyl. I got to collect the vinyl, even if I don't have a way to play it. But then I got this and then I got the Cyano Wild Hearts. And I've always been interested in collecting other soundtracks on vinyl, especially video game soundtracks on vinyl that I figured, what the hell? Let me get the, the record player and actually start up a collection. So that is uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 Complete Clowns in the Sky. All right, the next one I bought, I had to buy off of eBay. This was actually something I remember my parents having when I was really young. And so, and, and as funnily enough, uh, Classic Game Room, uh, what used to be known as Classic Game Room, showed off this record at one point. And that is this uh, Star Wars and Other Galactic Funk by Miko. Um, <laughs> I just remember it as being so goofy. And so I looked up on eBay uh, for a used copy, and surprise, surprise, they had actually reprinted this in, what year, 2015. This is a reprint from 2015. I think this originally, I, I don't know the original date. I had to have to assume that this was shortly after uh, Star Wars, the original uh, New Hope came out, that, which is when this record released, probably sometime in between that and Empire Strikes Back. So um, what this is, is it's almost, it's like the first side is Star Wars tune, uh, Star Wars music uh, in this galactic funk style, almost disco with lots of laser shots and stuff. It's just, it's hilarious and I like it. So I, and I think I paid around 20 something dollars for this. Um, I'm really glad I bought this. Side B is just other uh, grand funk disco-esque. Um, space music inspired by Star Wars, but like the first and this first track is just there's no breaks. It's just all the way through. It doesn't stop till the end. It just one track leads into the other, and uh, this is fantastic. I highly recommend this if you're into Star Wars and you're looking for something a little different. <laughs> all right, this next album. Just looking at it without knowing what it is, kind of shows why. One of the reasons why I wanted to get into collecting vinyl, just the creativity of the media itself. Uh, look at the things that they're doing these days. And this is actually, and the next couple of them are going to be from I Am 8-Bit. I bought three albums from them. Uh, this first one is 140. I think this was on sale, which is why I bought it. I hadn't heard of the game before. I looked up the game. It seemed interesting. Uh, one of the reasons I bought it is because it said it came with a Steam code for the game as well. But... I don't, uh, I, I didn't get the code, or at least I missed that. I sent out an email for uh, help on where I could find the code. I haven't heard back yet, so hopefully I'll, I'll hear back soon. But this is, I, I, I listened to some of the tracks. I was like, yeah, I like this music. So I went ahead and bought the vinyl. Again, it couldn't have been more than $20. Um, but yeah, there's, um, basically, this is where I, I was like, oh, we got to keep the shrink wrap on, just cut out the, to get the album. And, and, and again, normally, the other ones I haven't shown you, but they were just normal sleeves. But now they're starting to get creative with these, uh, with the sleeves the record actually goes in. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. The only, only thing I'm not liking about this in, in terms of creativity is there's no, really no indication of what is side A and what is side B. You just have to remember that in this case, this is side A and this is side B. So you just have to remember, like... Otherwise, there's no indication, not even on uh, this. It's very minimalist, which is okay. Again, you just have that, you know, the big black. Just, uh, just the creativity. I love the creativity in the packaging and the media itself. And, um, you know, it's just a different experience listening to vinyl. It, it, and I'm sure if you do have, if you have vinyl yourself, you understand that. I don't know if I can explain it. I just, I'm more willing to listen to a whole album if it's sitting there and playing rather than um, just downloading stuff digitally and just having it play randomly. I'm not less likely to skip songs and stuff. So yeah, this is uh, 140. 
All right, next one again from I Am 8-Bit. This is the soundtrack to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles uh, 4, Turtles in Time, music from the SNES Classic, finally on vinyl. I think there were two different album styles, but uh, this was the only one they had at the time. But I was like, yeah, I love that music from that game. So I wound up buying this album. Um, personally, I don't like the aesthetic they went with this. I mean, this this here, this green thing here, that's a sticker that was on the outside wrapper that I peeled off and I stuck on here just so I knew what it was. Otherwise, it just says pizza. If you look at the back, it just is a, it just is a bomb. And you wouldn't know what it is otherwise unless you were to open it up. You kind of see the um, the turtles, and, and that's it. And you've got the um, you know the the song selections here. Um, really great soundtrack. I really like this. This has got grade A music and stuff. But yeah, the only reason, even though this is only one album, this opens up anyway. So that's why I had to take the wrapper off. And um, again, we just normal um, sleeve here, just black instead of white. The, again, this has the same problem I have with 140. The album looks cool and everything, but there's no indication of which side is which. Uh, you just have to remember that, hey, uh, side A is pizza and side B is a bomb exploding. Maybe that's uh, the, the clue is that, uh, I just realized this, the clue is that uh, the front of the box is pizza and the back of it is bomb. Maybe that's what the, what the clue is. But, um, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, music from the SNES Classic. I like this album regardless. One of my favorites. All right, that uh, looks like the cat decided to join us here. He's looking around. Actually, he was chased down from upstairs because of the puppy. <laughs> but uh, this one is actually two albums in one. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell, but this is um, the, the album for Smash Out. And also the album for Pinout. So, um, yeah, you got a really, very weird spine on this one, too, because on one, it's, and it says, I don't know if I'll be able to focus on it, but it says Pinout, but then you have to flip it over. It says Smash Out, or Smash Hit. I'm sorry, it's not Smash Out. Smash Hit. <laughs> I bought it mainly for the Pinout uh, album. But, yeah, this one's, uh, this is the, what you see right now is the Smash Hit album. It's a transparent blue. The Smash out or the pin out album is a um and, and inside we have uh it's a pink but here's we have the two uh representations of the games i really like the pin out soundtrack which is why i bought this um the the smash out one was kind of a bonus again there was a, a sticker on the wrapper i don't know if you can see that and you, i'm sure you heard the dog they're growling and barking at the cat so give me a moment to resolve that so yeah, the stickers were that was on the wrapper I put on the inside there, and here is the I, I switched the albums during the break. <laughs> this is the um, Smash Hit sleeve. It's it, on each individual sleeve. It shows the the tracks, and this is the uh, Pin Out sleeve, and you can see that it shows. Well, I don't know if you can really see it. It's very small, but it this is this is very good because it's very minimalist. But at least you know which is side A and side B because of one dot or two dots. Or whatnot, but yeah, two albums. I again, I think this was pretty cheap considering it was on sale. I think I, everything I bought from I Am Eight Bit was on sale, so uh, yeah, this albums for Smash Hit and Pin Out. All right, the last two albums I got were from Mondo. This is the soundtrack to Thor Ragnarok, and I really, really like the music from Thor Ragnarok. Uh, it actually happens to be my favorite of the Marvel movies. So I saw this and. I don't remember if it was on sale or not, but I just bought it because I was like, yeah, I really like the music. It was done by Mark Mothersbaugh, who was the lead singer for Devo uh, way back in at, in the 80s and such. And I just really like his music to begin with. So I had to get this. I listened to it. It was great. Um, there was a lot of bonus stuff so I'm no I was noticing with this Mondo uh, deal. So let's, um, in sleeve one, it, it's like, yeah, really nice sleeve. It's got a little plastic cover here instead of just nothing. Uh, very nice record holder. There's a little bit of artwork that was in here as well, showing um, Korg and I don't remember, Meek, Meek and Korg, I believe their names were. I, I could be wrong on that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I opened it up. I didn't, but you get this nice artwork here of the Hulk, Valkyrie, Loki, and Thor facing off against, uh, what was her name, Hela and 
the beat I don't remember what the beast was name was all at all but um, yeah and then album two it won't really show off because it's kind of the same deal as this and but again Mondo and the both albums that I got from Mondo if this is had this in there it's kind of like what you would see in a Japanese um, release CD release but it had the little spine cover here. Uh, so, you know, you can see Mother music by Mark and Mother's Bar. So you would know what it is when you're buying it. But again, this actually stores pretty nicely inside of uh, the sleeve here. I don't think there's anything else other than just the record here. Yeah. So again, that's album, or, uh, not album two, but record two. Um, yeah, but very, very cool. All right, lastly... Wild Stallions! <laughs> uh, there was no way I wasn't going to buy this one again. This was from Mondo. This is the soundtrack to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I just really love how the album cover that they've done here is a replica of the album cover as it appeared in the movie uh, for, <laughs> for uh, Wild, Wild Stallions. Um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, one of my favorite movies of all time. And I think over time, I've just grown to love the music in that movie more and more and more. So I just had to get this album. And of course, with Mondo, um, there was a whole bunch of bonuses in here. Again, we had this little uh, spine cover here. Really cool. Uh, Bill and says Excellent Adventure. You got the, the <laughs> dial here. Um, actually, I bought this before I even knew that uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music was coming out this year. I'm looking forward to that um, because after I bought it, like a week after I bought it, this took like a week and a half or two weeks to get to me. Um, but after I bought it, then I found out, uh, oh, there's a trailer for Bill and Ted Face the Music. And what? It's coming out in 2020? I had no idea. I knew it just seemed to be like something that was always going to be far off in the future in my mind. And um, I just, I really like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I really like Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I hope that this doesn't, the new face, the music doesn't ruin that. But uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic about that. But uh, what else did we get in here? I put that back in there without even realizing that. Oh, wait, there was more stuff. Again, um, there was a, let's see here. Yeah, there's, this is the, what's funny is that this came with, this is where the album resides, the Circuits of Time Directory, History at Your Fingertips. Actually, there is another little phone thing. But then again, there's another sleeve for the record to go in inside of this even. But on top of that, there was something else. Here it is. And this was a little bit bent when I got it. But I think I've kind of straightened it out. You can kind of see it was creased there when I, it was, the way it was inserted in to begin with. But again, this is just a replica from the Circuits of Time directory. I don't know if this is exactly taken from the movie exactly, all of these. But almost, all, I think all of these represent a character in the movie. Yeah, Genghis Khan, Billy the Kid, Socrates, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, uh, Joan of Arc. And, um, oh, the, this is again the, the babes in the uh, medieval times. Um, Napoleon, Ludwig von Beethoven. Uh, oh, here's just San Dimas, uh, 1980. Sigmund Freud, pre they did visit the prehistoric ages, and uh, just time and space in general. They got their covers, ba their uh, bases covered with this. So uh, fantastic. And then also, uh, I kind of flipped the record over right here just to show you that on this particular album, the backside doesn't have any of the labels or anything. So it's just, it's just a really cool album here. And that's going to about cover it. That's all eight albums uh, that I've gotten on vinyl so far to date. Uh, any future pickups I get will be in my regular pickups video. I just had to make a separate video for this because this is a, a new experience uh, for me, collecting vinyl. Uh, something I kind of wanted to start getting into, but just never did. But now that I have, well, now I'm going to start paying more and more attention to those soundtracks that are on vinyl. And again, I may, um, again, let me know if there's any, you know, I, I'm familiar with I Am 8-Bit, Limited Run Games, um, those all those places, and Mondo now. But if there are any other places that have these kind of exclusive vinyl albums, let me know. I want to check them out. Um, yeah, and just tips in general, maybe recommendations on turntables, that kind of thing. I'm, uh, I'd like to hear. I really am. I mean, I, get, I don't want to spend a fortune on this stuff. But again, my video game collecting is kind of dying down a bit. 
and this is kind of just replacing it, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing any comments anybody has on uh, this kind of thing. So thanks for watching. See you next time.